Hey lovelies, thanks for stopping by my channel today. I am excited to be bringing you today's video because it's a swatch party and you know I love a good swatch party. So today we are going to be ooing and eyeing at my entire Pretties for Your Face collection. So I found this brand, I would say about a year ago. Uh, I can't even remember who I found it through anymore, to be honest. It might have been Jacqueline tries it. It might have been Jacqueline. And I just had to try a few of the shades. First of all, I was like, wowed by the prices and there was a sale where you could get the shadows for like 50% off or buy one get one 50% off something like that and let me tell you in my first order I found a few true gems and since that first order I have done several several more orders I also have had the opportunity to create two shades with the brand I am an affiliate with the brand now so I was given this opportunity as a fun little like affiliate bonus and that was a great experience I will be sharing those two shades of course within this collection because they're in, they're in my collection now. So I will share those two with you and I will give you my thoughts on these shadows. I'll be sharing some of my favorites. Now this brand does have more than just eyeshadows. They have some bath and body care. I have not gotten anything other than eyeshadows. Oh, I actually have a highlighter. I think I have a highlighter. So, or it's an eyeshadow that's big enough to be a highlighter. Anyway, we're going to get into that. <laughs> so right off the bat, I just want to say as an affiliate with Pretties for Your Face, if you do use my discount code, which is Keep Beauty Real, it will save you on top of the amazing sales that they have. And what I get out of that is store credit. So I just want to say, if you do decide to use my code at any time, just know that I'm receiving some store credit to buy more pretties to swatch for you in the future. So I didn't want to make this intro too long, but I do want to introduce myself. If we haven't met before, my name is Kelly and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And here on my channel, I strive to keep beauty real, real honest, real relatable, and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to click subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. But we're going to dive into these swatches. If that's what you're here for, that's what I'm going to give you. I am going to give you my sort of overview on the brand at the end of this. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on shopping the brand and of course a few of my favorite shades as I mentioned. So let's go ahead and dive right into pretties for your face. All right, lovelies, we are gonna dive right into these shades. As you can see, I have separated them as best as I can by color story, and I do have some highlight pans on the bottom here. So we're gonna get into this right now. I hope you enjoy the swatch party. All right, here we have our first set of swatches. So these are what I would call my pinky, peachy, slightly rose goldy shades. Uh, this one, it's gonna be hard to see these first couple because they're really close to my skin tone. So this first one is Cham Cham. And by the way, I should mention that I'm obviously doing all of these in like color categories because then I feel like it's easier to compare them to each other in case you're looking at a few. And also uh, I'm just doing these dry. Like I said, I do feel like the Pretty Sphere Face Shadows are best applied wet with a wet brush, uh, but I did not want to do that so that, you know, I didn't want these to be seen in an artificial way. Like I wanted this to be a true swatch, but you will get much more intensity if you do these wet. Anyhow, Cham Cham, and then we have Fragile. So Cham Cham is definitely like an icy pinky tone, whereas Fragile is more of that like sparkly, peachy nude. It definitely is a much warmer shade. Then we have a Treyu, and a Treyu is a new to me one. Um, it's not a new shade by any means, but it's one that I finally got after seeing a swatch of it. It, it was one of those that I was like, uh, I don't know, from the picture, and then I saw a swatch. I cannot remember whose swatch it was. I was like, oh, this is really pretty. It's a very, like, coppery, it has a rosy shift to it, but it's like a I would say like a coppery rose gold. And then this next one here is one that I'm pretty partial to. This was my creation, one of my two with Pretties for Your Face. This is the shade Lovelies. So this is definitely more of like a pinkier shade. So the base of it is more rosy than Atreyu and the shift is more goldy. So this is almost like a rosy peach with gold shift. Uh, then here we have Jolt and Jolt is definitely, as you can see, it's much flakier. So here's the thing. When we were creating my shades, I said that to me, I really, really wanted 
very smooth shades. And that is something within this brand that you will find is some of them are very smooth, some of them are kind of satin, some of them have glitter, some of them are very flaky, and I don't prefer a flaky shade. Jolt is an exception to the rule for me because I really, really love it. It definitely has that like rosy purple vibe with lots of little like fun flecks. It's so pretty. So it's definitely worth it, but oh my gosh, you have got to use this one with a wet brush or a glitter glue or something. So again, we have Jolt, Lovelies, Atreyu, then here we have Fragile and Cham Cham. All right, I guess a couple of these could have gone in with the pinks, but they're they're more, you know, they're warm, they've got a warm shift, whatever, here they are. I also realized that when I did my full Davina collection, I kind of kept the pans out here, and I like that, so we're gonna do that. So here we have Happy Days, which is very pretty. Uh, it's definitely a little bit warmer and it has even more of a peachy gold shift than Lovelies does. And then we have Ozone, which is that really pretty orange. I'll be honest, in the pan, this looks like a little like wah wah, cause I don't know, this one, I'm assuming this one maybe has been around a while. I just find that some of the older shades, they're pressed a lot harder into the pan and deeper. And so this one looks like it's almost only half full, but it's very, very pretty. It has like a pumpkin with almost like a, coppery orange like shimmer to it then that next one is thankful and thankful is a bit drier a bit more flaky but it's almost like a caramel color with mm, like a silver and gold almost like a silver and gold shift to it like uh sparkles rather than a shift then that next one is royal rose it's a very smooth beautiful shade definitely much more pink than lovelies much more pink than uh happy days so this one probably should have been in the pinks along with m80 which is a very vibrant beautiful like hot pink i i like this one and i like that it has Sorry, I'm just like tilting up so I can catch the light a little bit. Uh, it has a lot of like gold reflect to it. So these ones are a lot of fun. Hi, my name is Kelly and I have a yellow eyeshadow addiction. <laughs> Seriously though. Um, I just have a problem. I'm looking for the perfect yellow. Have I found it yet? Maybe not. Let's also like wipe this a little bit. That's gonna drive me nuts. All right, so I'm hoping that I can catch these in the light. Right there, you might be able to see it. So Flare has a blue and almost ultraviolet flip to the yellow, whereas the next one, which is X-rays, has a pink flip to it. You can almost see it in the pan here. Uh, they are similar in base, but the you know, that sparkle that's over the top is definitely different. Yeah, there you can see that right there. So the first one again is flare uh, and then x-rays. So it just kind of depends on what you want to see in yours. I think that flare is maybe a little bit more unique because it's like a warm base with a cool flip, which is pretty cool. Uh, no pun intended there. So then anyway, that third one, that light one is golden Aries. This is definitely more of like a creamy like lemon cream but it also has a pinky flip to it like just like a pinky peach flip to it it's pretty delicate but it's definitely there and then that fourth shade is one that i got in my last order that is kishmish so this one feels a lot like what was it ozone um it's pressed a little bit further into the pan and it just, it takes a lot more to build. I would say that that's probably like three finger swipes. I just wanted you to be able to see the color of it. It's more of like a goldenrod shade. It's shimmery. Well, it's sheeny, but it doesn't have any flecks or glitter to it, but it definitely has a little bit of sheen. I would say that on the eye though, that's gonna look more satin. It's not gonna be super sparkly. So, I don't I don't know that I found my dream yellow within these. There are some very pretty ones. Like I do definitely think that Flare has that uniqueness. I don't know, I like all of these, but I don't know that any of these were my dream, but gosh, you can see the flip there. That is so cool. Okay, so here is our first round of greeny shades and darn it if everything next to Slimer doesn't look anything other than green. Ugh, I swear they're green. So this first one here is Nightingale and honestly, this is definitely in my top five. There is just something about this. It is, so these first two shades have that, 
like grungy base that, uh, which is it? Is it the Galaxy Shifters, Galaxy Dust Shifters from Divina have? It's like that maroony, browny, grungy base. So both Nightingale and Explosive have that base, but Nightingale is more of like a, let's see, I would call it a champagne to green, whereas explosive is like a blue to green. Sorry, I needed to be able to see those. So those are the two up here. And then Slimer is like, this is definitely another favorite shade. Look how electric that is. It, it literally, it just looks like it's plugged into the wall. I love it. Uh, the next one I love is the one below that, and that is Love's Bend. So that, again, is a shade that I created with Pretties for Your Face. So Love's Bend is another very smooth shadow. It's great because it's semi-translucent. Let's see if I can show it here. That's still on my thumb. So it's semi-translucent, and so you can really sheer it out or build it up so it can be fun to layer over things. It's it's just beautiful. I was so happy with this one. Uh, and of course that is named after Jeremy. So I love it even more. And then the last one is one that I actually received as a recommendation from so many people. Ooh, there's a good little, little look at the shift in these. I mean, you can see brocade there is so sparkly. Everybody was like, you don't have brocade yet. It's one of the best greens ever. It is so sparkly and pretty. And honestly, this is one that looks better in person than it does in the swatches that I saw online because it is green. It, it looks like it's gonna just be a basic green, but there is something magical about this. It almost has a bit of like a, a teal shift to it. And I don't know that it's picking up on the camera, but these are all very, very fun. So there is a little shot at these beautiful shades. I love them. I love them all. You guys know that I love a good green. I definitely have some more greens to share, so we're going to get into those. They're more of the like lighter greens. At some point, you know when you have some shifty shades and you're like, I really don't know where to categorize this? Some of these are coming up. Okay, I found another green, so I'm just slapping it in here at the end of this one. <laughs> Please forgive me. So these are definitely some, like I said, sometimes it's hard to put these into a category. So this first one here, if I turn it too far, it's almost like it like starts to blend into my skin. But this is the shade Heavenly and it is truly Heavenly. It is like a purple pink into teal. Like, oh my gosh, it's like purple pink into like a bluey teal. It is amazing. Oh, see, there you go. Now you can see the blue. And where was the purple? We just had it. <laughs> so uh, this really is a lovely one. And then the second one is Hidden Treasure. Hidden Treasure is definitely a favorite of mine. There is just something about the shade. It is very pretty and very, the shift on it, like just that little bit of sparkle. It's this beautiful like teal that has a very reflective quality to it, almost like gold. And then the next one is Childlike Empress. This one has a beautiful formula. It's very, very soft. By the way, I wanted to say that I feel like my arm was still a little bit wet from wiping off the last swatches. So you can see how these shadows are a bit more intense just because my arm is a little bit more damp and I did it and I was like, oh gosh, I should have let it dry for another second. But this way you can also kind of see the difference of what it would be like using some of these wet. So Childlike Empress is one, I don't think I've used it yet, but I'm, I mean, just swatching it just now, the thing is, is I don't reach for blues a lot, but there's something stormy about this shade that makes it really pretty and I think really wearable. The next one is Beetlejuice, and I think I've used that one in some Build Your Own palettes, so I really do like that one. It's a little bit more of like a gray-based, bluey purple, and then the last one is Zodiac. So this is the one that I was like, yeah, this one is definitely a green, but it's like a... I don't know, It's it's got an electric, like grass meets teal, and it's got a ton of little micro sparks in it, like tiny, tiny shimmer, not glitter at all, but tiny shimmer. So that again is Zodiac. These ones again, I'm like, well, okay, we've got some blue, we've got some purple, we've got some green. These are just like some shifty business shades. And then um, of course, Zodiac. I think I just couldn't get it into my green room, but these are all very pretty. All right, moving into more purples and blurples. So <laughs> this first shade is definitely one of my favorites. And I tried every single category I put it in with, I was like, nope, that isn't right. I put it in greens and I was like, no, that's not right. And I put it into like the lighter purples. I was like, nope. But anyway, Rockbiter is another one of those because it has that murky base again, but it just has this beautiful like gray purple 
silvery blue green magic I don't know oil oil slick on your face it's really fun I I really like that one obviously that is from the never-ending story collection um, along with another one that's in here so this next one is plasma and I, I have some thoughts that I share at the end of this video but this is where the formulas range so much within these shades so I don't know to me let me see if I can get like a good shot here I feel like plasma and you might not be able to see these other two either, but Plasma, it sort of falls flat compared to a couple of the other shades in here. And this is one of the polymorphs. So that is a shade that is actually more expensive than the one on either side of it. So that's a $10 at regular price shade, whereas the others are $5. This last one is also a polymorph. But um, Plasma to me is just not worth that price at full price it feels a little bit drier it has a nice little shift it's like a purple with like an ultraviolet to pinky fuchsia over the top but it's not shifty it's almost more that it's got like micro shimmer so then the next one I have already forgotten the name of oh yeah this is the nothing so this is another one I believe from the never-ending story and the nothing is almost like Plasma's darker sister. So the Nothing has like a bluey gray with lighter blue shimmer through it, like micro shimmer. So again, to me, I don't know. I I just, I would rather pay $5 to get this one than $10 to get this one, obviously at full price. So then this next one is another polymorph and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the magic of this. I did, let me see if I can pop it onto a finger. I did put this in a recent BYOP. Yeah, I think this is gonna be really hard to show, but this is charged. I wouldn't say that the base of this is black, but it's a really, really dark charcoal and it has blue and purple and maybe even some silver little micro sparks through it. So to me, this is maybe worth that $10 formula, whereas plasma is not. Again, you've got so many different formula types within that polymorph category. Oh, look at Rockbiter there, just shining so nice. So these are a few of the like deeper blurply grouplies. I've got a few more to show. Let's get into those. Okay. <laughs> so here is one where my eyes evidently led me astray. Uh, this first shade though is Falcor and let me tell you this is one of those ones that it just looks like meh in the pan and when you swatch it out it's so pretty I don't think it's necessarily unique so Falcor is just that like pearl essent white it's white with a little bit of lavender and pink to it it's so so pretty and then this next one I don't I don't know why I put this one in here. I'm, well, I mean, it's in here because it's a pretty sphere face. I just mean, I don't know why I put it in this category. I'm not quite sure where to put it. This one is IEI and this is from Jacqueline Tries It. She created this shade and this is so pretty. I have not used this one yet. I don't, I really don't know where to categorize this one because it is like a taupe, like not gold, not silver. It has like a champagne, and gold and slightly pink reflect to it. Like, it's so cool, Jacqueline, this is really pretty. Um, I honestly, I 100% got this because it's Jacqueline's shade. This is not a shade that I would normally reach for, but it's very cute. Uh, then the next one is the shade Smiley, and it's a, you know, it's a light lavender. Like, I don't think that it's anything that I've never seen before, but it's a beautiful shade. It seems to be very smooth. The next one is Solstice, and Solstice, I would say, has a bit more, you know, a bit more kick in the pants as far as color tone goes. This is a very pretty shade because it's a, it's a lavender with some blue hints to it. Like, I think you can see right there where Smiley is light. It's a light lavender, but Solstice has that little bit of blue. So then this next one, Listen, y'all, I don't I don't think you're gonna be able to see. Hopefully you can see that a little bit more. So this shade, in some lights, um, in some lights it looks purple, and then it looks gray, and then it looks green. This is one of the polymorph shades. This is the shade Current, and this one definitely, like, the shift is there. Like, the shift in a lot of the pretties for your face is there, but it's a more satin-based shift. It's not gonna be super foiled, super metallic which, you know, it gives a pretty cast to the eye and you still get some shift without being worried about texture. So 
this is one that, I don't know, it's just kind of magical. I haven't worn this one yet either. A few of these in here were from a recent haul and I've just been like saving to do a little live swatch party with all of you. And then finally I was like, all right, there's a sale coming. I just want to like swatch all these so you can all see. But yeah, cause like right now in the camera, it looks purple to me, but where I'm sitting, it looks green. So hopefully you guys are seeing that. Okay, I have three shades. Uh, in the large pans. You do have an option with a lot of the shadows to get a smaller or a larger pan. I do believe that this first one here, well, it'll be the last shade swatched on my arm here, is actually an eyeshadow, but I personally think that you can definitely wear it as a highlight. I got it because I wanted it and they were out of the smaller pans. <laughs> so that's, that's it. And sorry for the mess that we're getting over here, but this is the last set of swatches here. So we have Cotton Headed Ninny Muggins. This is that more, mm, again, it's one of those like kind of gold, kind of white. This is just, I don't know. I, I think I was more enamored by the swatch of it when I saw it online. Now in person, let me see if I can just like sheer it out because I'm never going to wear a highlight like that crazy on my face. I mean, it's pretty. I don't know that I would necessarily get it again. The next one is Fairy Frost. This one is definitely unique to my collection. It is a lavender blue. Um, let me see if I can find that one, that finger to be able to like sort of spread out a little bit more. Yeah, this is pretty. Like if you're looking for something that's a little bit shifty, a little bit unique, but doesn't have texture, um, tomorrow is the launch of the Odin's Eye uh, Solomon collection, the Solomon 2 collection and you know, those highlights have some beautiful shift and beautiful tone, but they are very sparkly. And so I feel like those will definitely, they just have more glitter to them. If you don't want glitter, but you want something with a unique cast to it, I think Fairy Frost is very pretty. Then the one down on the bottom that really kind of blends in with my skin tone is Autumn. And again, this is, I believe is an eyeshadow, but it makes for a very beautiful, either like shimmery blush or a highlight. The only problem is this one, I think I've only used it two or three times and I have hard pan on it. So I really need to try to remove that, but it is a very, very pretty shade. So I will definitely, you know, enjoy using that as a highlighter, probably more as an, than an eyeshadow because for an eyeshadow, it doesn't have enough impact for me. But, um, you know, you can really get these large pans at a pretty good deal if you are looking for something that is a little bit more on the subtle side of highlight. Well, I mean, to me, these are still quite glowy, but compared to some powder highlights out there, they are subtle. All right, lovelies, I hope you enjoyed this swatch party. You'll have to let me know. Do you have any of these shades? Are they on your wish list? If they are, again, don't forget that my code will save you 20% if you do decide to pick anything up. Now, let's talk a little bit about what I think is best when you are shopping with this brand. Now I will say, again, I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I have not ordered any of the Bath & Body products. They do send out little scent samples in most shipments. I will say that I, I haven't found anything that I've really enjoyed from the scents. But I will also say that in the past couple years, like anything like body splashes, like when we think about like Bath & Body Works or Victoria's Secret, even like some of those, it, it just is too, there's something off. There's something off about it. So I just find that that isn't something that I enjoy in general. However, they have these whipped soaps that I've been very, very curious to try. So if you've tried a whipped soap, will you please let me know what you think? I'm I'm so curious. Like it just sounds so interesting texturally. I don't know. At some point, maybe I'll pick one up. I've sort of been waiting for a sale to happen where I can still get like bath products and eyeshadows at the same time on a discount. Speaking of discounts, I personally think because this brand does have fairly frequent sales, wait for a sale. They usually have at least a sale a month, if not more. So definitely if you can hold out for a sale, I think you can really get some good deals. They're a little bit different every single time, but usually you're going to get at least 20%, if not more off of the eyeshadow. So definitely wait for a sale. And yes, codes do stack on that. So use someone's code. If you're not going to use my code, use someone's code because it's a really good deal. Now, the other thing that I would say is, and I totally get this, like this is a brand, you know, that was like, I believe she started on Etsy and it just like grew so much that she had to like start her own website. So this is another like indie hand pressed shadow brand. So like it takes some time, it takes some time to make the shadows. It takes some time to package everything up and get it out. But I will say, I feel like the site is lacking a little bit in maybe some true swatch quality in the images and also just the 
like previews of the pan. So when you go in and you click to see the shades, you know, you've got the little circles up that show you the pans of the shadows. However, I would say at least 25% of the time, the circle that you see is way different than the shade. So it's almost like you have to click on every single circle to see what the shadow really looks like in swatches. That really bums me out a little bit because it does take a little time to shop. So I guess what I would say is make sure that you like check the shades that you really think you'd like. I will say I have gone through and literally clicked on every single one <laughs> to see what it looks like. So the best way to probably research is honestly to watch some swatch videos. And that's why I was doing this video because I really wanted to bring you some like true imaging of what these shadows are like. Uh, I just think, I don't know, there's just something about the previews. Now, this is not by any means the only brand that has had a preview image of a product that looks very different from the actual swatches by any means, but that is something that I've noticed from the site. I will also say that the formulas within this brand really vary. So right now she has the regular eyeshadow collection and then the polymorphs. So I would say that the standard eyeshadows are going to be some of your mattes, some of your satins, and then some of your standard shimmers or like glittery shades. Now there's also the polymorph pigments, which are considered multi-chromes. However, I have to say, even within the polymorph category, the, the formula really varies wildly. And I'm assuming that in my swatching, I will have notated which of the shadows that I have are polymorph. So here, just like looking at the site, uh, let's see, what are a couple of the ones that I have? So I have the shade Jolt, which is a, it's one of my favorites, which I've probably already shared with you, but Jolt is like a beautiful, like shimmery, foily shade, but it's a little bit flaky and it has like some big glitter particle particles in it. Then you have the shade Explosive, which is much more smooth. It has like a little grungy underbase to it and it's this beautiful green. Again, another one of my favorites, but totally, totally different formulas. And then also like the shade Charged. So Charged is like a blacky charcoal base with like multi-chrome specks in it. So it's like more like a deep base, a deep matte base, I would say with lots of like multi-chrome glitter to it. Like it's not a press glitter, but it has lots of sparkles. So three very, very different formulas in one category. Now I, I am seeing here that it looks like all of the polymorphs, their like previews are just swatches. So that I think that I think is nice because then you're seeing a little bit more true version. So maybe that's what the brand is doing moving forward is they're gonna start doing that. So that is one thing that I will say. And again, I just think that the best thing you can do is research swatches for these just to really see the formula. I would love to see the brand sort of categorize a little bit further, like, have a few more formulas, you know, have a couple categories, like maybe one that's more like glitter multi-chromes and one that's more like just multi-chrome in the pigment itself. You know what I'm saying? So I just think it would make shopping more smooth and quicker and easier to do because I know some people that love all the glitter, give them all the sparkle you can. And then I know some people that are like, no, I'm going to throw this at you if it has glitter in it. So I just think I just think it would be an easy way to shop. So that is definitely what I would have to say about that. I will also say that these shadows in general are a bit softer compared to some other indie brands. And I don't mean like only in the pan, although some of them are, but like, I mean, they're a little bit softer as far as the effect on the eye. So most of these are not going to be like, whoa, molten, molten rainbows on your face. They're going to be a little bit softer, but I think that one of the things that's nice about that is it's much more flattering if you have a little bit of texture on your eyelids. I think that a couple of these, like I have the shade Heavenly and it is so pretty. It's like a silky multi-chrome. It's not like overly high shine. It's just like satiny. I don't know how to explain it. It's magical. I really like it, but it's not like wet. I also think that to get the bang for your buck out of these shades, you do want to use them with a wet brush. And then for like the flaky ones, either use a mixing medium to like Multinify it a little bit more. Not a word. We're going to just go with that one or to use a tacky base, a glitter glue, which let's face it is basically how I feel about like all flaky shadows. That's just the way that is. But I mean, look here at the prices. Like if you are picking out a regular formula shadow, they're $5 for the pan itself or $6 with a case. And that's the other nice thing. If you really just want like one or two and you aren't someone who has a lot of like magnetic palettes laying around, you can't get this in a case. If you're like a one and done shadow lover, great. 
So, you know, $5, let's say you get a 25% off or even sometimes they have 50% off codes and then you have a 20% affiliate code on top of that. That's that's pretty inexpensive. And the polymorphs are all $10 and usually the same sales apply to them. So you can really get these for half price a lot of the time. So I think there is some value in that. Now, the other thing is I will say they come packed in cardboard sleeves, like literally cardboard, not like the ones that you get from some of the other bigger indie brands that are more of like that pressed paper with the like clear plastic. These are like literally folded over cardboard with like a clear like cellophane -ness. So the glamour isn't there in the packaging. I'm really okay with that. It doesn't really bother me all that much. And the pans are totally hand pressed. So there will be some irregularity in that. So I think that sometimes you'll get pans that seem filled to the tippy top and some that don't seem quite as high. I think a lot of that happens in the pressing. So if you are a person where it's like packaging is super important to you and like the experience of opening a shadow is super important to you, you might not find the value in this brand. If you are someone where you just want some fun, beautiful eyeshadows and you love a good deal, this is totally gonna be a brand for you. I definitely have some that I love to wear and I get compliments on all the time. I've obviously shared those with you. And now let's talk about this in the comments down below together. If you are a Pretties For Your Face user, if you've tried some things, please leave some comments down below letting us know the shades that you like. And truly, even if there are shades that you were a little bit disappointed in so we can all kind of like follow along, build our wish list. I know I have some still on my wish list. I'm definitely looking forward to taking advantage of another sale down the road. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it valuable. If you did, please don't forget to give it a like, lovelies. I will see you really soon.